All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem. So we're given two strings, and we want to check whether or not the two strings that we were given are anagrams of each other or not. So just to be clear on the definition, an anagram, well, a string is an anagram of another string if it contains the same characters, but the order of the characters are different. So here's an example which makes it a little bit more clear. The word act and the word tack, these words are different words. They have the same letters, but the order of the letters is different. So therefore, act and tack are anagrams of one another. Uh, another example here is a little bit more elaborate. These two strings, this pair of strings, practice makes perfect and perfect makes practice. These are anagrams of each other because you can rearrange the letters of this string here to arrive at this string down here and vice versa. However, unlike uh, this pair of strings, these strings here, allergy and allergic, are not anagrams. Um, and that's easy to see because there's no way that you can arrange the letters in this string to arrive at this string. Uh, for one, there's no C here, uh, and vice versa. There's no way you can just arrange the letters in this string to arrive at this string either. So that is sort of an example of an anagram and also pairs of strings that are not anagrams. And what we want to do is write a function to distinguish between the two. So this function is going to take two strings and it's going to return whether or not the pair of strings are an anagram of one another. So the first thing that we're going to do before we actually approach this problem is just to do a bit of pre-processing on the strings themselves to make the uh, strings a bit easier to deal with. The first thing that I want to do is I want to remove any white space. Uh, white space for the examples that we have here is not a problem, but I can imagine um, a pair of strings having let's say an excess amount of white space perhaps just to kind of throw you off to ruin your day. So let's just get rid of that as uh, a possibility. So we're just going to say string one is equal to string one dot replace or we'll replace all the white space in string one with, sorry about that, with nothing. And then we're going to do a very similar thing, the exact same thing to string two. So at this point we've smushed the strings together so all the white space is gone. The next thing that I want to do is I want to make an observation that we can't have an anagram if the length of the strings are different. So there's no way for you to rearrange the letters in one string and to just magically rearrange them to generate new letters to be in the second string. So if the lengths are different between the two strings, you're never going to be able to arrange them to be equivalent to the first one. So there's an immediate disqualifier here. We can say if the length of string one is not equal, to the length of string two, then we're just going to return false right away because there's no way that string one can be an anagram of string two, vice versa. Okay, so we're going to do one further step of pre-processing and that is just to uh, make everything lowercase. This is just easier for us to deal with in case there's any uh, example strings that have uppercase characters. The example strings we have in this uh, don't, uh, but we could imagine that somebody could, you know, Put in a capital letters just to throw you off. So what we're going to do here is just say string one is equal to string one dot lower, and then we're going to do the same 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 thing with string two as well. So now everything is smushed together. It's lowercase, and if the length of string one and string two are different, we have exited the function. So now what I want to do is I want to um, solve the problem using a hash table. So there's a number of different ways that you can solve this problem. This is certainly not the uh, only way you can do it. Hash tables are pretty frequently used in uh, interviews and technical, technical interviews specifically for types of problems of this nature. So it's good to recognize when you can use a hash table. Um, so this is one instance where it does come in handy. Uh, again, it's not the only way you can solve the problem. If you haven't solved this problem before, I encourage you as always to pause it, try it yourself. Uh, once you've tried it, feel free to unpause the video and follow along uh, using the hint uh, that a hash table is something that you can use to solve this problem. Okay, assuming you've done that, I'm going to create two uh, separate hash tables or dictionary uh, items in, in Python speak. So I'm going to create one dictionary object in the following way. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write out exactly what I'm doing and then I'm going to describe kind of the method to the madness of what I'm writing out right now. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to copy this here. It's just going to be a little bit easier. 
Okay, so what am I doing? Well, for one, I'm creating a string variable, which is just all of the letters of the alphabet. And then I'm creating a dictionary object, which is created in the following way. So I'm creating this dictionary from the keys, or I'm creating the keys in this dictionary object from a list, which this list is the list of the string that I've defined up here. And I'm setting the respective values for each of those keys to be zero. So if it, there's a lot in this one line, and if you haven't seen it before, it's a little bit tricky to follow. So I'm actually going to call this function, and we're going to see exactly what is happening in this line. If, you, if you're familiar with this uh, line, if you know what's happening here, feel free to skip about a minute or so. Uh, but if you haven't seen this, it's a nice way to kind of initialize a dictionary. So what is actually going on here? Well, we are creating a dictionary, as I mentioned, from keys, the keys being the list of the alphabet. So when you say list of string, essentially what that does is it takes the string and it separates it up into individual characters, where each of those characters are a component in the list. So for instance, if I say print list of alphabet, what I get is, let's see, some sort of an error because it doesn't know what string one and string two is. I probably should input string one and input string two that problem right so if you say the list of alphabet what it does is it breaks this up into individual characters and it uh, each of the components in this list uh, are the characters of the string so those end up being the keys of the dictionary and the values the corresponding values that we're going to use are zero so this will be a count uh, we'll see how we can use this count to uh, essentially tell us how many times we've encountered a character in string one and string two. So I'm actually going to do this twice. And there's going to be two separate dictionary objects. So again, just to be clear, if I print out dict one, which is, again, just a hash table, histogram, dictionary, they're all equivalent, whatever you like. If I print that out, it's a dictionary object. You can tell that by the curly braces and by the colon. And essentially what we have here are the letters uh, notice that the order of the letters is not alphabetical. They're just the order is really not particularly important. But there's the character, which is the letter in the alphabet, separated by the colon to indicate that the following thing is the value, the corresponding value of that key. So each key uh, in this dictionary has a corresponding value of zero. So we've essentially just initialized an empty dictionary where each key is the letter of an alphabet and each corresponding value is zero. Uh, apologies if I went on a little too much there and if something is still not clear from that uh, please let me know in the comments. So what we're going to do with these dictionaries is we're going to loop through the strings we've acquired in the function and we're going to every time we encounter a letter in either of the strings we're going to fill we're going to increment the counter of the respective letter that we've encountered in the string by one and we're going to keep track of each string in each separate dictionary. Let me actually write out what I've tried to explain there. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to follow if I write it out first and then explain later. So let's loop through the length of string one. And I'm going to say, again, I'm just going to write this out and then I'm going to explain exactly what's going on. And here as well. So what am I doing? Let's break it down. So line 29, I'm looping through the length of string one. Now, why is it string one and not string two? Uh, well, it could be either, really, because at this point, we've, from this statement here, we know that the length of string one and string two must be equal, because otherwise we would have exited the function. So whether or not I put string one or string two here is doesn't really matter. So I'm looping through the length of string one, and then what I'm doing is I'm consulting the first characters of the strings that we're looping over. And I'm saying, okay, at that key in the dictionary of dictionary one, increment the counter. So let me actually bring down this, let's say this is string one, for example. What I'm doing in the first iteration of this loop is I'm hitting A, and A is what's uh, popping up here. So A corresponds to a key in the dictionary. So we're indexing into this thing, 
and we're saying, okay, A is here, increment the value of that key by one. So we move on. The next letter is L. Again, we consult the dictionary at position L for the key, and we increment the counter by one. So this is essentially keeping a running tally of all of the letters in the, the string that we happen to be concerned about. Dictionary one is concerned with string one, dictionary two is concerned with string two. Okay, so what we have at the end of this loop are two dictionaries, which you know, are essentially histograms that correspond to the frequency distribution of letters in each string. So really all we need to do is we just need to return whether or not the first dictionary is equal to the second. Because if they are equal, they have the same distribution of letters in, in each of the strings, which means that we can reformulate or reform those letters in any way and arrive at one of the other strings, which essentially means they're anagrams of each other. So if this isn't the case, then we know they're not anagrams. So that's all we need to do. And just to verify this works, at least for our test cases here, let's give this a shot. So we know that input string one and string two should return true as this is an anagram. And we should see that the second pair of strings, three and four, which was allergy and allergic, this should return false because this, these are not are not anagrams. So if we run this, uh, I probably should print out the result here so we can actually see. And if we print that out, indeed, we have true and false. So that's the end of this video. Uh, if you've seen a stupid mistake in this video that I've made, please let me know. Um, or if you want to suggest a problem for me to work through, I'm happy to do that as well. Uh, thanks again for watching and good luck with your interviews.